Hello, I'm Paul from Paul Rance Now. Welcome to the studio. Today's Bob Ross classic painting is Deep Forest Falls. I've listed down below all the paints and brushes that I use, and there's some affiliate links as well in case you want to purchase them. You don't pay any extra, but I get a small commission, and that really goes towards supporting the channel. So, sit back and enjoy, with a cold drink or a cup of tea. Happy painting, people. Here's my canvas for today's painting. I've put a border of masking tape on, just for a change. I've also dropped in some pins. These are my horizon line pins. I've used a Bob Ross one inch brush to give me the measurement for the top of my waterfall. I start my painting using a round brush and a synthetic liner brush. I'll also be using a piece of this car sponge. I'm going to start off with some black gesso. Just take a small amount on the sponge. Give it a few dabs to get it distributed and start off by just reinforcing that horizon line so you don't lose it when you start painting. Now, just gently stipple on some paint. Think about making some nice bushy, leafy type shapes to the top of the horizon line. I'm going to use the synthetic liner brush and a couple of drops of water just to create some background trees and foliage. Take note how far back I hold the brush in my hand. I use my fingers to let the brush wiggle and jiggle. I start at the bottom and paint up and out. This seems to give me the best looking trees. I've mixed a bit of black and white gesso together to get some sort of grey trees and gives a sense of depth and distance to my painting. I'll also take a bit of that grey black gesso and stipple in some extra foliage at the very top of my painting. This draws your eye to the distance and it's a sort of way of creating almost a vignette. I'll add a couple of extra dabs of black gesso here and there just to settle those trees into my painting. This Bob Ross painting, Deep Forest Falls, has some rocks under the water. I want some mid grey gesso just to do this and I want to just measure the distance down for my waterfall and I'll put a little bit of a mark there just to allow enough room for the pool at the bottom of the falls. Now more grey gesso here and lay your brush on its side and create little humps. We're looking for some nice river rock, smooth washed rock so not too spiky and small ones in the distance and maybe some bigger bright ones in the foreground. Take your time building these up, but if you don't like the finished effect, just pick up that black car sponge and dab on some black gesso. It's easily fixed and you can have another go when it's dry. As my painting dries, you'll notice the gesso tends to darken slightly and I wanted to brighten up this little group here a bit more. So I'll go back over them with a bit more light gray. Just catch the tops of these stones. They're gonna have a ray of light shining on them. Fingers crossed, I might get it in the right spot. So here's my finished underpainting. Make sure it's completely dry before you start applying oils. Talking oil paint, I'm going to be using two Bob Ross one inch brushes. A nice new one and a slightly older stumpy one. I'll also be using a Bob Ross fan brush, a filbert brush and a synthetic liner and of course a Bob Ross palette knife. The first oil paint to be applied is this. And it's Bob Ross Liquid Clear Oil Paint. And I keep a small amount in an airtight pot, just for ease of use. And I'm going to use that old, worn out brush just to scrub this on. We want a very, very thin, even coat. Not too much. Your painting will become too slippery and wet. I made a video all about this, and here's a link to it in the corner. A quick test of my canvas, and mostly good, but there is a wet patch up here in the corner. You can just see it, just a little bit too much of the liquid clear. So, pick up a paper towel and give it a gentle wipe. Don't scrub it, you'll knock off all the little fibres from the paper towel and that'll get into your painting. I try clean that old one inch brush and now I'm going to apply my first colour, phthalo blue. This is a very strong blue and I want to start up here in the corners first. That's a little too strong. Don't waste it, just scrub off some more. 
over the black gesso. It'll all need a thin coat of phthalo blue anyway. That looks a little bit better and the liquid clear enables me to blend all my colours on the canvas. So anything you do can easily be changed. This is one of the most forgiving techniques of painting. I'll also glaze some blue over those rocks. I want them to look as though they're sitting underwater. Check your canvas. You want to see a nice blue colour coming back, not too oily and thin. And check all over the canvas. It's not always easy to see where you've been. Now, I want to create the illusion of a little bit of sunlight coming through the edge of those bushes. I've picked up a little bit of titanium white on the corner of my nice one inch brush and just gently stipple this onto the painting. Titanium white is opaque, which means it's not see-through. But as you see, if you dab and work it in, it becomes more like fog and you can build up the intensity of the sunlight. Tap around, creating little rays of light. If you want to recover any of those tree trunks or branches, I like to use a little cotton bud. Just simply wipe off the excess paint. Time for some rocks to hold the top of my waterfall in. I have loosely mixed Van Dyke Brown and Dark Sienna on my palette. And I'll use my Bob Ross palette knife just to block in the position and shape. But don't forget to allow room for the waterfall. The highlight for this rock is a little bit of that grubby titanium white, a little dab of sienna. Let the paint break over that dark, sticky underpainting. This takes a little practice, but there's a few more rocks to try on. Don't overwork them too much. Now for your bravery test. I've got my fan brush and I've added a couple of drops of liquid clear to my titanium white paint and my waterfall needs to sit just in here right at the very top of those rocks and I'll put a little bit of a mark here where I want the waterfall to stop now firm pressure be brave push and let gravity make your arm drop the drop of liquid clear and the titanium white will make the paint flow more easily and adds a nice shine to the paint. Don't worry if your waterfall gets a little wider. We'll add some rocks in to the side to contain it. And that's what I'm doing next. A little bit more of the Van Dyke Brown Dark Sienna. I just want to create sort of a ledge on the right hand side. I'll use more of the highlight colour that I used on the other side. I keep the rocks on the right a little darker because they're in shadow. The ones on the left catch a little bit more of that sunlight. I want to have a little bit of splash and crash at the base of the waterfall. I tap my one inch brush into that white paint. It doesn't have to be too bright to start with. I just want a subtle blue splash. I'll add a few speckles of bright white when I've done this stage. I next want to underpaint some bushes at the sides of the waterfall. So I've mixed up a dark green colour here. I've used Prussian blue, midnight black, some alizarin crimson and some sap green. And it's going in this area. In fact, I'll be adding some of this to the left and right side of my waterfall. This gives me a lovely dark sticky underpainting on which I can add some highlights. It's an important step. I even add some over the edges of my waterfall to push it back in my painting. I now use my nice brush and various mixtures of sap green, cad yellow, Indian yellow and a little ochre. See how I push my brush into that paint to make a little ridge? The same little ridge is on the edge of my one inch brush. Now, the light's coming from the right so I want to tip my brush so that some of the brighter colours are deposited on the tops of these bushes. 
just use the very edge and leave these little leafy shapes. Paint your bushes one section at a time. Don't fill it all in. And if it's not bright enough yet, don't worry. I like to come back and add a second little round of highlights once the rest of the painting's completed. That means I'm just adding the movie stars at the end. Don't forget, you can like, subscribe and leave a comment on any of my videos. It really helps support the channel. It lets YouTube know that I'm doing something you enjoy. You can also share my videos through social media. Thank you. Let's add a few stems and stalks to those bushes. I've added a few drops of liquid clear to some of that rock highlight. And I just want to tuck these in between some of the foliage. They're what I call lost and found. Don't make them too bright though. Remember, this is Deep Forest Falls, so everything wants to be a little bit muted. I want to add a little bit of a riverbank on this left hand side. This time I'm using the entire width of the brush and angle it down towards the water's edge. This is an area which is often tricky for people who are new to painting and they tend to want to fill everything up. My advice is leave a little bit more dark here and there under those bushes. You can always add more paint but it's much harder to take some off. Now let's add a few more bushes on the right just to hide up those branches and stems and stalks. Finally, let's add a few little rocks. I've got a filbert brush and I'm loading both sides with some of that dark brown colour from the rocks and then one side with highlight. So highlight on the top, dark underneath. Now hold your brush light side up and dark side down and just roll the brush over. You've got half and half. So partly dark, partly light. If the light colour doesn't come off, reload. So you're putting on the shadow and the highlight all in one brush stroke. I've picked up a tiny roll of that contaminated white paint. Remember, keep it muted. It doesn't want to be bright white. And use the edge of the palette knife and just scrub this colour into the surface of the canvas. Think about how these ripples might be sort of meandering towards you. I want to be able to see some of those rocks under the surface of the water, so as you work forwards, leave some bigger gaps. I just catch my knife on the edge of the riverbank here and pick up a little bit of that sap green and cadmium yellow colour. As Bob would say, a happy accident, and I quite like it, so I leave it. So here's my finished painting. This side needs those little movie stars, maybe a few down here as well. I want to just add a few extra bright touches to this side of my painting. So I reloaded my one inch brush with a little bit of extra bright cadmium yellow and sap green. And I want to just pick out the odd edge here and there. Don't overdo it though. You hear me say that so often, but it's so tempting to want to just repaint everything. Remember, too many movie stars, and they end up fighting with each other. So just a, a few touches here and there makes such a big difference. Now for some rays of light. I want some rays of light towards these rocks. And I've got a little bit of the white paint on my fan brush now. Careful aim here, you want to go right from the centre and don't clip the top of those bushes. You end up with green sunlight and we don't want that. So just gently drag the paint along. Now, I've done three rays of light here and I like to use my finger just to soften them down. I don't want them to be look like, like laser beams. I just want them to be sort of soft dappled light. But you can overdo it. And well, I did. I put all these rays of light on here and then I thought, actually, I don't think I like them very much. So I just want to blend them out and I use my finger. Simply give them a rub and they soon disappear into the background. Oil painting is one of the most forgiving mediums to learn to paint in. So here's my finished painting. Time for the big reveal. Off with the tape. So here's my finished painting. A Bob Ross classic, 
deep forest falls. Don't go away, I have another Bob Ross classic coming right along. Happy painting, people. <laughs>